So the lab procedure for this is fairly simple. What we would end up doing is we would have a pot of boiling water, a beaker filled with room temperature water, which we'll have to keep replacing for each individual trial because we always want to make sure we're starting with this beaker at room temperature. It doesn't necessarily have to be room temperature, but it needs to be the same temperature. Uh, for the purposes of my experiment, I was at about 19 degrees Celsius. A thermometer so we can read the temperature and a stopwatch. So what we would do is we would take the large sphere, put it into the boiling water, leave it there for about a minute. Once it's been there for a minute, this metal sphere is going to be at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. We'll pull it out. We'll put it inside the room temperature water. Initially, what's going to happen is the temperature is going to increase because we have additional heat provided to the water from the sphere. Uh, now, at some point after that temperature increases, it's going to plateau. Once it plateaus, that's when we begin recording the data. So it plateaus and then it will begin to fall. Once the temperature begins to decrease, we start the stopwatch and we record on 10 second intervals what is the new temperature. We do this three times for the large sphere, and then when we're done, we repeat the experiment for the small sphere. Now, after we've gone ahead and done this for the large sphere and small sphere, we would have produced three trials, one, two, three, one for the large sphere, one for the small sphere. Now, this data is being given to you because you're unable to complete this lab in class due to, well, the obvious. Uh, so I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks for Excel. Uh, I recommend using Excel. Google Sheets works as well, and the majority of the things that I'm going to show you work on Google Sheets as well, but you might find some of the commands or buttons in certain different areas. Uh, a lot of the formulas I'm going to use are the same, though. So rather than calculate the average temperature for all three trials, I'll just hit equal, average, open parenthesis, and I'm going to highlight the three columns, trial one, two, and three, close parenthesis, and hit enter. Now, instead of typing that formula in, uh, it will be another 12 times. I'm just going to grab the square, drag it down, and boom, it's calculated all for me. Now, you'll see that I have these arrows at the top left indicating an error. It's because it believes that I've omitted this column here. That's okay, just tell it to ignore the error, problem goes away. You'll do the same thing for the small spheres as well. But now here's the tricky part. You need to go ahead and produce a graph. We want time on the x-axis, so I will highlight time and all the numbers. I will hold control, then I will select temperature and highlight all of these numbers. I'll release control, I'll insert, and I specifically want a scatter plot. Now a couple of things are going to pop up incorrect on the scatter plot, and that's fine. We can adjust it in a moment. Uh, one of the things that we are going to notice is it titled it temperature, which is incorrect. That's not a proper title for this. How about large sphere change in temp? I also need to put labels for my X and Y axes. So in the design section here, I'm going to add a chart element, axis title, primary horizontal. I'll type in time, and don't forget to include your units. And then we need a vertical one vertical temp. If you can't find the degree symbol, that's fine. You can use the asterisk symbol. Uh, but if you want to be very specific and use that degree symbol, you will need to go into insert symbols, and then you'll need to find it in here. Since I've recently used it, uh, it's readily available for me. I've gone ahead now and I've produced my graph, and I'm pretty happy with this layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these lines, and I will right-click on it. As I right-click on it, I see here Add Trend Line. And that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to add a linear trend line because this seems to be moving in a linear form. So I put a linear trend line, and then the most important thing, too, is right here, Display Equation on Chart. I click this button. Now the equation Y equals MX plus B format pops up for me. I can move it over here. I see I have a negative slope. I have a positive y-intercept, and I'm good to go. At this point, this graph is perfect, and it's ready to be copied and pasted into the lab. I will need to do the same thing for the small sphere, and just like that, boom, data tables, graphs, all set to go. 
Again, you can use Google Sheets to do this. There are a few different things you would have to play around to get the uh, labels for the axes and the titles, but they do trend lines as well. Key thing, remember we want scatter plot, and then we will put in the best fit line ourselves. Do not play connect the dots.